This video gives a quick introduction to computing a chi-squared statistic. Let's start with this fake example involving election data. Suppose in some election, we have the following breakdown of votes by age group for a sample of 100 voters. So we have 35 voters that are age 50 and over voting Democrat, 30 voters age 50 and over voting Republican, 25 under age 50 voters voting Democrat, and 10 under 50 voters voting Republican. We want to know, is the proportion of Democrats versus Republicans among older voters similar or different from the proportion of Democrats versus Republicans among younger voters? To start out, let's figure out what fraction of the total vote is Democrat versus Republican. So I'm going to add totals columns. Total number of Democratic voters is 35 plus 25, which is 60. Total number of Republican voters is 40 and the grand total number of voters is 100. I can also total the other direction, age 50 and over, 65, under age 50, 35. So the fraction of the total vote that's Democrat versus Republican, Democrats have 60 out of 100, or 60% of the vote, and Republicans have 40 over 100, or 40% of the vote. If there were absolutely no relationship between age group and voting preferences, then how many of these 65 older voters would we expect to vote Democrat? Well, since 60% of the total vote is Democrat, we'd expect 60% of those 65 older voters to vote Democrat. In other words, the Democratic vote we would expect to be 60 out of 100 times 65 voters which is 39 voters. Similarly, for older voters voting Republican, we'd expect 40% of them. So 40 over 100 times the 65 older voters gives us 26 voters. As a reality check, let's note that these two numbers, 39 and 26, still add up to the 65 voters. Now let's find the number of expected Democrat and Republican voters among the 35 younger people. By the same reasoning, if there's nothing going on with age and voting preference, then we'd expect 60% or 60 out of 100 of these 35 voters to vote Democrat. So that's 21 voters. And we'd expect 40 out of 100 times those 35 voters, which is... 14 voters to vote Republican. So this, these top two numbers are my older voter expected counts, and the bottom two numbers are my younger voter expected counts. Let me add these counts to my table. So I have here the expected counts if there's no relationship between age and voting preference. I want to compare these to the actual observed counts. They seem fairly close, but to quantify just how different they are, I'm going to look at the difference in each category. So in this category, age 50 and over Democrat, I'm going to take the difference of the observed count minus the expected count, square that difference, and divide it by the expected count. If I do that computation, 35 minus 39 squared over 39, I get 0.41. I'll do a similar computation for each of the other categories. Now I have four numbers that measure the deviation of my observed numbers in each category from my expected numbers. I'm going to add those four numbers together, and that gives me my chi-squared statistic. So I have 0 0.41 plus 0 0.62 plus 0 0.76 plus 1.14, and that adds up to 2.93. That right there is my chi-squared statistic. So what does that number mean? If it's a big number, then that's saying that my observed counts are pretty far off from my expected counts, suggesting that there is some relationship between age and voting preference. While a small number says that observed counts are pretty close to expected counts, suggesting that there's not really anything going on. I'm just getting about what I would expect if there's no relationship. So how big is too big? Well, to find out, 
we have to calculate something called degrees of freedom, which is just the number of rows, the number of row variables minus one times the number of column variables minus one. So here, the degree of freedom, there are two row variables, Democrat and Republican, so that's two minus one, and two column variables over and under age 50, again, two minus one, so I have one degree of freedom. Now I can use a chi-squared calculator online or the chi distribution function on my Google Sheet to calculate a p-value. Here I get a p-value, I'll just say chi dist of this number 2.93 with one degree of freedom. The p-value gives, it, it gives me is 0 0.08. The p-value of 0 0.08 or 8 percent means if there is no relationship between age and voting preference, we'd expect to get a test statistic that higher or higher only about 8% of the time. So it'd be pretty unlikely to get that big a test statistic if there's no relationship between my variables, even though the p-value isn't below the standard threshold of 5% for statistical significance. Let's do another example. In this fake example, we have three strains of malaria, malaria A, B, and C, and two locations, <laughs> rather large locations, Asia and Africa. We have rather small numbers of malaria cases in these two locations, but let's just go with this example to, as a practice for computing a chi-squared. As before, first let's compute some totals. I got these numbers just by adding up my rows and my columns. Now we can compute expected numbers of malaria cases of each type in Asia and in Africa. Assuming for now that there's no relationship between location and malaria strain. If there's no relationship, then the expected number of malaria A cases in Asia should just be the total proportion of malaria cases, 45 over 150, times the number of malaria cases in Asia. Working out the numbers, that gives me an expected number of 25.8. Similarly, the expected number of malaria B cases in Asia will be the proportion of malaria B cases overall, which is 7 out of 150, times the number of malaria cases total in Asia, 86. That gives me a number, expected number of 4.01. And for malaria C, we do the same computation. The overall proportion of malaria C is 98 out of 150 cases. So we're taking that proportion times the 86 cases in Asia. So that gives me 56.19. I can do the same computations to get the expected number of malaria cases of each strain in Africa. Now I'll compute my observed minus expected squareds over expected for both Asia and Africa. Adding up all six of these numbers gives me my chi-squared value of 5.25. Again, I compute a p-value using a tool like chi distribution on the Google spreadsheets, and I have to plug in a degree of freedom. The degree of freedom here will be 3 minus 1 times 2 minus 1, since there are three row variables and two column variables. So I put in 2 times 1, which is 2 for my degrees of freedom, and that gives me a p-value of 0 0.07. Again, kind of small, doesn't make the conventional 5% cutoff, but it would be unusual, only happen about 7% of the time, to get a chi-squared value that large or larger just by chance. Now, there are a few things you might be wondering about this chi-squared number. First question I have is, why do we do observe minus expected squared? And why do we do divide it by expected? Well, if we just did observe minus expected by itself, then positive and negative values would cancel out. 
And it turns out to be convenient to use a squared function instead of, say, an absolute value function, which would be another way to make all those differences positive. Why divide by expected number? Well, a difference of, say, 10 for observed minus expected, so a difference of like 100 for observed minus expected squared, that would be an important difference if you're talking with small numbers. Like expected is only like, I don't know, uh, 20, and you're all the way by 10 off, that's huge. But not if the expected number is, say, a million then being 10 off would just be not very important at all, just could easily happen by chance. So by dividing by expected, we put those differences in context of how big the expected is. The third question I have is why focus on rows, not columns? Well, we could focus on columns, in fact. Instead of focusing on Asia and Africa and doing these expected counts here, we could focus on malaria A and malaria C and B and malaria C and do expected uh, numbers of malaria A in Asia and Africa, B in Asia and Africa, C in Asia and Africa. We'd actually get the same numbers because if to, we wanted to do expected counts for malaria A in Asia and build our table down this way, to compute this number here, We'd say, OK, how much malaria A would you expect in Asia? Well, the Asian fraction of cases is 86 out of 150. And we multiply that by the total malaria cases of 45. And that would give us the same number of 25.8 as before, because it's actually the very same arithmetic computation. 86 over 150 times 45 is the same thing as 45 over 150 times 86. Either way, we're just doing the totals in the corresponding row and column, multiplying those, and dividing it by the grand total. So there's a symmetry to it. And it doesn't really matter if you focus on continents and look at expected number of malaria strains for those continents, or focus on malaria strains and do the expected distribution of continents within those malaria strains. This video gave a quick introduction to the chi-squared test and worked out a couple examples on fake data. The idea of this test is to compare observed counts to expected counts, where the expected counts are if there is no relationship between your column variables and your row variables.